Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. If I've done my editing job right, you are watching me in black and white because this is the latest instalment of Three Continents, One Palette. As always, the players are the lovely Miss Nona and the lovely Miss Laura. And the palette this month, well, it's just meant to be. Yeah, I'm sorry, that was terrible. Um, nearly as terrible as the challenge we've set ourselves this month. Oh, it's a doozy. So, if you want to find out, A, what the challenge is this month, B, whether I succeed, C, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and D, what kind of blethery nonsense I'm going to be talking about this time, and then my friend, you. You have the best seat in the house. As I've said for some time, oft here echoed on other less imaginative channels who do not have a Sammy the Sloth straw to accompany them. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and indulge. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the intro, it is the latest instalment of our Three Continents One palette. And the palette this time is Mint to Be from Colourpop. Where did I put the cover from this? That's a very good question. Maybe I left it in the drawer. Mm. Anyway, for some reason this month, with a green palette, we decided it'd be a really good idea to challenge ourselves to use all the colours. <laughs> I don't know how wise this is. <laughs> this is either going to go really well or it's going to be a hot mess. Um, hmm. uh, whichever way it goes, this is still a teaching channel. Uh, and as such, my chronic pain means I can't blend that quickly anyway. But um, I also try and do things at a speed that beginners can keep up with me um, and I try and talk you through why I do specific movements now as part of that sort of teaching element of my channel which I think is actually sorely missing on YouTube these days uh, I noticed that a lot of people were mistaking deep set eyes for hooded lids so they're following hooded lid tutorials and wondering why they're not getting the right result. So, in just a minute, I will insert a clip. It's going to be very up in your face because I literally just zoom in just to my eyes if you've not seen me before. And I will talk you through how to tell whether you have deep set or hooded lids and then what the workarounds are for each eye type. If I'm going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget up there somewhere, or maybe down there if you're on your laptop, it's around there somewhere. Feel free to use it. Bothered. Face. Bothered. Ooh, that dates me. Anyway, I'm guessing that's going to be very much a UK um, thing that people are going to pick up on. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. It's it's 
half past seven. I've been up for three hours. Didn't get a huge amount of sleep last night, so I apologise if I do. Occasionally have to muffle a yawn. But I got me an energy drink. I've just brushed my teeth for the second time this morning to try and wake myself up. So, here's your clip. I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues.
Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to use quite a tapered blending brush because obviously I've got to try and get as many of these colours onto my eyelid as possible. So I'm going to use as small a brush as possible to minimise the area in which the shadow gets blown out. Um, I am going to be using the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is basically natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and then reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do that is because I'm 46. I've lost over 14 stone. It's over 200 pounds. The skin on my lids wrinkles and moves. But I know slim 20 year olds that have similar issues. So by doing the Viennese waltz rather than relying on the windscreen wiper, you're preventing that sort of telltale white striping you can get when your lid is folded over and it's completely skipped a patch of lid. Right, so I'm going to start off in Chill Factor, which is the darkest of all the greens. I'm going to tap off well. I'm going to start off down here close to my natural crease. I don't think I'm going to go all the way across. I might just go just past halfway. Today. So, this series. I believe we're on episode 10 now. So if you're only just finding it and decide you really enjoy it, lucky you, you've got all the previous rounds that you can watch. And of course each time, we, we do this on the first Saturday of every month, so you're guaranteed three films that day. And we are on three continents. Nona, who started the series, she was the brainchild behind it, is in America. Laura is in New Zealand. And obviously I'm in the UK, in Europe, because although we've left the European Union, We still reside within the continent of Europe, which I know confuses quite a few people. Confuses a few of uh, a few Brits as well, to be honest, which is a tad worrying. Uh, I'm going to continue this down just onto the outer edge of my mobile lid, this side. Now always remember your eyes are not symmetrical. So when you do this eye, Every so often, relax your brows and just look at them and make sure you're getting the same shape both sides. Because sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape on one eye to get it to look the same. Both sides. As I said, Nona was the brainchild behind this series. She um, put a post up saying, I've got a lot of the Colourpop 9 pan palettes, the, the, you know, the monochromatic series. I really want to do a series around them where I use one each week sort of thing anybody interested in joining in and both Laura and myself were like oh yes please that sounds like fun we've got a fair few as well because although 
Colourpop isn't sold in the UK. I've ordered direct from the website and packed customs. And I've also bought some from reseller sites like Depop. So I've got quite a lot of them. And I really like the formula. I love Colourpop's formula. Um, you know, for a cheaper drugstore type. Okay, not so cheap for us in the UK because we have to then pay postage and whatnot. But for a cheaper palette, they really are good quality. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a, on a washcloth and then pick up a different colour to start blending on the upper corners here. Uh, Nona is the sweetest person you will ever meet. She... She's got such a kind heart. Um, she's a real sweetheart. Um, she always has something positive to say about your film. Even if you didn't like your film, she will find something about it positive to say. Um, she is such a lovely person. She's so good natured. Right, I'm going to dip into De Month. I think the first... Right, when you're going to blend two colours together, Start off with your brush half on the colour you're blending and half on the eye that hasn't got anything on it yet. Because then you get a really nice, so you don't get that, that line between the two colours because you're actually blending the shade out. And then come in. And build up your colour. I do struggle sometimes here and here on both eyes because I get dry patches just there. So sometimes I have to work to build it up. But that's okay, it gives me a little bit longer to chat to you. Yeah, known as, I mean, I'm, I'm terrible, I'll, I'll put a load of films in my watch list and I'll be getting on the other things while they're on. So I'm, I'm, I will admit I'm a terrible YouTuber in that I often hit like as the film starts but then totally forget to put a comment on before the next film starts. Um, so I will admit I am awful at that. But I do give you likes and I do give you watch time, folks. I'm just terrible at leaving you comments. Um, but Nona is... I don't know how she finds the time, but she comments on everyone's film. Um, and she really... She brightens your day. She really does. She's like a ray of sunshine. She used to be very... Um, she used to be the neutral queen, but um, since she's been collabing with people like myself and Anya and Laura, who love colour, we've kind of tempted her into trying more colours. And she's a natural, she really is, she just knows which colours to blend together. She can even do you a goth look if you want, because she did that during her, her teenage years. So she went from goth to neutrals and now she's playing with colour. It's brilliant. It's like a full circle. Laura. Now, I know I say this every time, but she's my Titania, Queen of the Fairies. I realised one day when I was reading Midsummer Night's Dream that I was hearing her voice when I was reading the Titania section. She is a 
wonderful woman she really is. I'm going to dip into seltzer next. Still using the same brush. Same technique. Blend onto the two colours adjacent before blending out. Just so we don't end up with a harsh line where two colours meet. Okay. I may go in and deepen this back up later. See how it looks when I'm finished. Now Laura is our artist. Literally, she paints. She often has our paintings behind her um, in her films. And the first um, photo inspiration collab we did together for my series we used one of her paintings as inspiration which was such a compliment to me that she trusted me to you know reproduce something she had created in makeup on my face you know um, and she again absolutely wonderful woman she's just, I'm, I'm super lucky in the people that I've met on YouTube because I know the beauty guru world looks like it's falling apart right now but you're looking at the top 1% if you were looking at smaller um, channels like myself, like Nona, like Laura you'll see that we actually support each other, we have camaraderie we don't stab each other in the back we support each other and we help each other and that's the way it should be. Now I'm going to go into Get Fresh which makes me want to start singing Get fresh at the weekend show it out It's an 80s thing and I'm going to bring this I think all the way down to this inner corner Yeah, um, so Laura, by being an artist, as well as, you know, loving makeup, has a great deal of knowledge when it comes to colour theory and blending colours, etc. Now I've got a fair amount of background because I worked for a print company for three years. Obviously I know about the four colour process and RGB and, you know, etc, etc, the colour wheel, blah, blah, blah. But I still couldn't blend yellow and purple together without making it muddy until I watched Laura's film. And she did another one more recently about um, the purple spectrum and how to create all these different purples whether it was a, a ready purple or a bluey purple or a true neutral purple um, and it's just you look I learn so much from her without realizing I'm learning because I'm enjoying watching the film as well and that's the sign of a good teacher If you're learning while enjoying what you're watching and don't realise you're actually learning, that's a skilled teacher. That's, that's, that's how teaching should be. I'm, I'm kind of pulling up my eyelid here quite a bit because I've got super deep creasing here where my eyelid was pulled around. You can see the striping there. It was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital and unfortunately Sometimes the circular movement. My Viennese waltz doesn't always work. So don't stretch your eye out unless you already have issues like I do. Or you'll end up with issues like I've got and I promise you they only get worse as you get older. Alright, so how many colours have I used? One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm nearly halfway there because there's nine in this palette. I might just dip back into chill factor 
just to deepen this back up again. Just gently. Just add some of the depth back in. You can always do that if you find that you've blended it and you've kind of blended some of the depth of shade away. It's the beauty of makeup, you can just go back in and top it up again. So yes, if you haven't already watched both ladies, boy are you in for a treat after you've watched my film and you go and see theirs. And all three of us have very different techniques. Obviously I'm a teaching channel. Nona is a chatty, almost like a get ready with me channel. And Laura's kind of halfway in the middle. So, we all have quite different styles, but we all love playing with makeup. And that's, that's what makeup should do. It should be bringing the world together, not pushing them apart. And like I said, with smaller channels, you won't find the backstabbing and the bitchiness that you see with some of these larger ones, particularly that we're seeing at the moment. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get into that right now. Right, I'm going to grab one of my sprays. Have I got anything left in this one? Yeah. This is my Revolution Cucumber Spray. Um, I spray all my shimmers regardless of, of brand because it helps to stop fallout, it helps to produce um, a more high shine foiled finish. But you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. So I've got a lip brush here, which I love because of that V point, it gets right into the corner there, which is lovely. Right, so I've got four shimmers to use. Marvellous. Marvellous. Right, I'm going to start off in played cool just gonna load that up on the brush and then wet the pigment now this bit is now wet so I'm going to tuck it in my knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture getting down under the ferrule loosening the glue because then you won't have bristles on a brush or have a stick. I'm just going to pop this right in the inner corner, coming out to roughly where my iris starts. Just for a bit of colour there. Dry the brush off back into the pigment wet it again and now I'm going to put it on the side and again with this side I definitely have to stretch it out for this part because otherwise this pigment packs loosely into these creases and as it dries through the day it falls into my eye it gets very very painful the way that I do this without causing extra damage is I look at the width of the creasing, add the same width again, then put my finger on my lid and stretch it out just far enough that I've flattened the creasing. Not pulling it out to my earlobe. Okay. And as soon as I've got it to the point where it's blended. I just gently let go. Clean the brush. I'm going to try and get three shimmers on this lid. Wish me luck. Right, I'm going to go into Freshman. Pop 
put this on the part of the lid just next to where I carried this darker colour down but kind of stopping almost at the edge of my of my coloured iris again. Now hopefully because that's such a small area I might actually have enough on the brush to do this side without having to redo. Dry the brush. I'm just going to use the tip of the clean dry bristles to very gently buff where it meets the matte shade there just to blend that in a little bit and soften it. Clean the brush again, go into the third shimmer, Mint Tea. Gently blend it in either side. Okay, let's see if I've got enough on the brush to do this side as well. Ooh, looks like I might have. Look at that. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've used seven shades so far. I've got two left to go, folks. <sighs> All right. I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation on and some other base products. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you now. I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you again, but for you my darlings it will be absolutely instant. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I have green brows. Ha ha ha! Uh, I did my usual, brushed them up with uh, soap, didn't wet the soap, used the soap dry. Then used my brow brush to put Ice Cold, shade number 8, cheating slightly, but to put Ice Cold just through the brows. So by using the soap dry instead of wet, it leaves it a little bit sticky. This gives something for the powder to stick to. The powder sets the brows into place. It's marvellous. Right, going with the flat top brush. I'm going to go into the same colour that I used on my brows in case people say using it on my brow is cheating. I'm going into ice cold and I'm just going to run this along under my little lash line. Regular viewers will know that I can't put things in my waterline as a rule. Um, I've always had super, super watery eyes. Add to that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that uh, hay fever and high pollen count. And anything in my waterline basically ends up cascading down my face. Uh, I'm going to grab people, again regular viewers will know which brush I'm going for. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette 
flat topped but chunky but I love it it's great for just buffing out that lower lash line and I'm going to go into I think this lightest matte here which is get fresh at the weekend show not because it made me sing again but just because I wanted to keep that lower lash line nice and bright just soften that out slightly you can see the difference that makes between the two eyes I hope yes I'm flinching this side I have no peripheral vision so I'm relying on muscle memory and if you find it's a little bit too far away when I've not got my contacts in or my lenses on or my glasses on and the number of times I've poked myself in the eye well <sighs> let's just say you could turn it into a drinking game but I wouldn't advise it and then this is a tiny wee lip brush that I bought over ten years ago which is proof if you look after them and clean them regularly they'll last you a lifetime because this wasn't expensive and the last shade in the palette that I've not used yet is a mojito mami and I'm going to use that on the inner corner oh and run it under the tear duct and just blend it into the lower lash line there I used all nine shades and it doesn't look like it's gone muddy which I was worried about I did worry I was going to end up with a muddy green mess look at that I'm put a little bit of that mojito mummy just under the tail of the brow Apparently, and all everything else, folks, our brows sink as we get older as well. So by adding a little line of light underneath it, either matte or shimmer, it gives the illusion of youthful, raised brows. Don't quite know why I decided to roll my eyes there. It just felt a pretty right. I'm losing the plot and it's only ten past eight. Great. Lovely. I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to lob some highlighter on. Uh, put some mascara on, put some lippy on, do something with the hair. And I'll be back with my finished look for you once again. Instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I used my Benefit Bad Girl Bang mascara today. I decided to give my three, three little stars because I think I actually made a good job of this. So I gave myself three little stars. I used my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut Highlight and then I put a little bit of that mint mojito shade from the middle just on the highest point of my cheek I don't know if you can just see that and the lipstick is a MAC it's a one made with Nicki, Nicki Minaj rather uh, Nicki's nude and it's one of their ampl amplified cream lipsticks so this is my finished look using the mint to be palette and using every single shade how do you think I've done could you do it or would you just look at it and go no no thank you pass next <coughs> did you expect this to look a hot mess at the end of it because I kind of did a little bit I mean, if it's peach or pink or lilac, you can you can use it as a blush. 
or a highlight. Uh, green, although I did use mine as a little bit of a highlight. You can't, can't really use green as a blush because it will neutralise any pink in your cheeks. Uh, Make you look a little bit sallow, <laughs> particularly if you put it on Ivy Foundation. But if you need to colour correct prior to putting foundation on, then uh, a little bit of green mixed in with your concealer or your foundation is very good to just, you know, spot target any particularly pink areas. But there we go. So my 4F lovelies, please double check you are still subscribed, YouTube are unsubscribing you, but they're leaving my films in your news feed so it's not obvious what they've done. Sneaky. Once you've done that, please give this a like, leave me a comment in the comments section and maybe even a cheeky little share. Maybe just a cheeky little one. Once you've done that, I'm going to need you to go visit my girlies, I'm going to need you to visit Nana, and I'm going to need you to visit Laura. Little Miss Sunshine and Queen Titania. So, you need to pop over, you need to do all the good YouTubery things, let them know that you're here from 4F Beauty, give them a like, give them a comment, give them a share maybe, subscribe to them if you haven't already, uh, and just just enjoy, enjoy watching the films, enjoy watching three women have fun playing with coloured pigments. That's what makeup should be. Not this drama that's going on at top 1%. You concentrate on us a lot down here. We're what the beauty community is meant to be about because we're actually a community, not a backstabby place. If you are here from either Laura or Nona's channel, or you've tripped over this film by complete coincidence, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something about the film that you must have enjoyed, even if it was just me blethering on at you, desperately trying not to yawn. Hmm, you watch me yawn now, I've said that. Hmm, 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 it's gonna come, it's just... If you have enjoyed it, it will be lovely to welcome you into the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Basically, you uh, press that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, and then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications and keep saying yes and all of them until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in a different way. And then hopefully they'll tell you, I don't know, one in four of my films that go up. I know you won't get all of them and you won't get them on time because my hubby <laughs> said to me yesterday, Oh, you got a film up? I'm like, no, the film went up day before yesterday, darling. He's like, oh, well, I've only just got the notification for it. And it wasn't the film that I put up the day before, it was the film I put up a week before. And that's my husband. Hmm. So, talking of other films though, see a little segue? I've got an awful lot that you can watch. Uh, there's all the preceding episodes of this series. Uh, I've got other collab series. I've got my photo inspiration series that I've talked about. I've got a Zodiac series that I've started and I must film the next one. I think next week will be the next instalment of the Zodiac series, if I can get it filmed over the weekend. Um, challenges, product reviews, foundation reviews. Um, I even read you my favourite poem. There's going to be something you'll like, I'm sure. So, if you're looking for some me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and just... Chill. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time.
Bye for now.